Rebreather makes me feel like Darth Vader, an English version of Darth Vader. Um, in all seriousness, your heritage, your genetic lineage is, uh, is under attack. And your genes, the rate at which you can express your masculine genes is being inhibited. In this video, we are going to touch upon something that hopefully you should be proficient in already. But the value really lies in the the reasoning, but also the practical application that comes towards the latter end of the video that will allow you to remove some of the toxic sludge that is permeating into your cells as we speak. Having a aromatization, estrogenic effect, feminizing, femina, and nothing wrong with feminizing, but there's something perverse in feminizing the masculine, the masculine principle. We must live in cohabitation. We cannot dilute ourselves in that respect. So BPA, BPA's effects on androgens, testosterone, DHT, and androgenic receptor binding points. Now, this particular video was in reference to a study that was done on the effects of the functions that I delineated just previously. Now, this is a very, very long study, as you can kind of see here. Um, affects androgen receptor functions uh, via multiple mechanisms in BPA. I've taken out on the right hand side, you can kind of see the key points that we're going to go through that are going to be the precursors, the rationalizing that you are going to need in order to execute with absolute ruthlessness on defending yourselves in the, in this respect. This is defending your endocrinology. This is this is defending your hormone health and the rate at which you experience the world is as a consequence of the chemicals that are moving through your blood. So BPA, also known as a strong anti-androgenic compound, it inhibits male sex hormone expression, testosterone, DHT, and the characteristics that are associated with the genes that upregulate when these hormones bind and uh, express themselves in the nucleus of your, of your cells. We found that BPA binds AR and competes with androgen binding at the LBD re uh, region of the receptor. So what does this mean? The Lingard binding domain for androgens like DHT and testosterone is being inhabited by many men with microplastics. Plastic, uh, this is what we're talking about here in more layman vernacular is BPA is microplastics that are flowing through your blood at this very moment. And the points in which testosterone is expressed in the gene happens through the functionality of the androgen receptor. Now, the androgen receptor sits inside the cytoplasm of each cell. It is a mediator between the free base testosterone in your blood and the nucleus of the cell, which is where gene expression happens. It is not good enough to have free base testosterone flowing through your blood if the AR can't take that free base testosterone, move it into the cell, into the nucleus, and turn on those genes. The point in which testosterone binds to that AR is, is like... It's like your, uh, your your friends picking you up in a car and three people, there's a person in the side in the side seat, in the back seat, the middle seat, and the last seat. And you're going, well, there's, there's no room for me. You open the boot and there's some guy living in the boot as well. You go, I can't, I can't get in to get where we're going. That's what's happening to testosterone. Your testosterone may be high, but if there's so much BPA in your blood, there is no space for testosterone to get inside the AR vehicle and go to the destination of the nucleus to turn on those genes. Horrific, absolutely horrific. BPA is unable to promote the normal, uh, the formation of function AR foci in the nucleus. However, unlike other known antagonists, BPA inhibits the efficient nuclear translocation of AR. So what does this mean? My interpretation of this is masculine gene expression happens in the nucleus, not in the cytoplasm, the outer part of the cell. BPA prevents AR moving androgens from the uh, from moving the cytoplasm from the cytoplasm into the nucleus. So I kind of expounded upon that previously. The the nuance in this point is the amount of time the amount of time these plastics actually sit in the cell. And if they sit in there for a long time, not only do they inhibit androgens like testosterone and DHT, but they also have an estrogenic effect. So the problem is actually twofold. 
The first point is testosterone can't even bind. And the second, well, see, three points. How long BPA actually sits in those, those LBD points. And if they sit in there, they're actually having a net negative consequence on masculine gene expression, but having a feminine gene expression. So it's not like, oh, okay, there's going to be a, a delay in which we express it. No, it's, it's, it's taking us in the completely opposite direction. So it's such a nefarious, insipid, and malicious expression that's happening in our very bodies. Based on these data, BPA is a potent endocrine disruptor. That's what we talk about. You hear these terms, endocrine disruptor. What does that mean, Joseph? It just means that we cannot express our hormones in the way that nature, that God, the universe intended us to do. So what do we do? Now, as I preface, there's some practical application that I would have you do in relation to mitigating the presence of some of these endocrine disruptors in your blood. Here are them very, very simply. I'm going to go into the reasoning first and foremost, and then translation, translate into some practical applications you can take. So tap water. I mean, tap water, the state of our plumbing right now is yeah, rather poetically the similar state of the microcosm in which our bodies are functioning. There's plastic in them. There's plastic in the plumbing equally. There's not just plastic in the plumbing, but there's toxins in the plumbing and uh, everything else. I would highly recommend, now I, again, I'm not sponsored by this, guys. I, I have one of these in my in my home at the moment. Uh, Water 2 is a filter, right? Um, just go through it here. It's, it's like a little attachment that you place under your sink and it filters the water that you don't need to, you, ca you don't need to keep removing the filters. That's a problem with regular water jug filters, which I have as well and which you should buy. They're usually filters with some kind of alkaline basis, but these ones you don't need to change and you don't need to worry about putting your water through a, a filtered jug. But I usually double up on that anyway because I'm always cynical of these kinds of things and uh, you can never be too careful. This is sourced from very natural sources like coconut shells and um, the cross section that I had the point on is essentially what is happening here. So your tap water full of pollutants, including BPA and other toxins, filter jugs. So if you've got filter jugs, you know, you're getting rid of quite a fair bit of the toxins if you're changing the filters probably every quarter. Um, but water too is filtering all the toxins, all the pl plastics and only keeping the healthy minerals. And then it delineates here, the unsafe microplastics, lead, chlorine, keeping things like magnesium, iron, and uh, calcium, killing the bad, saving the good. I sound like a spokesperson for this particular product, but it's a very good product. And um, again, I'm not sponsored or anything. This is in the UK. Find the equivalent in, in your country. Uh, it was pretty expensive. I wouldn't say pretty expensive. Considering the benefits you're getting for this, you buy it once and you have it for the rest of your life. It was 150 pounds for me, which is probably like $200. It's worth it. It's, it's worth it for me. I mean, when you're talking about the base need of a human being to survive on this planet, hopefully we should be able to source good, clean drinking water that don't have any chemicals, toxins, and certainly not plastics in them as well. Food storage, heating plastic can go into the same category. So I mentioned this on a previous video, which talked about enhancing male endocrinology and gene expression. But those, you know, there are some plastics that are BPA free. I'm talking about the Tupperware, you know, your meal prepping put it in the Tupperware, get the ones that are BPA free. But even, even still, I'm very, very cynical of these things. And I will only use glass. You can use porcelain, you can use stainless steel. Stainless steel probably wouldn't be good to microwave. But um, the problem is when you begin to heat these things, because they, it makes the plastic very, very unstable. The plastic starts to bleed into the food. You then ingest the food and then you've got more plastics into your body, which you definitely don't want. Just just go with a glass Tupperware. Go with a glass Tupperware. Plastic water bottles. I read a study that showed that 90% of the time if you're drinking plastic water bottles, you are putting BPA straight into your body. So don't do that. Personal piece of advice in this respect is get a filter. If you're not using a filter, you can probably buy water from reputable sources. I've got some pictures here. There's the glass Tupperware, glass porcelain and stainless steel. 
Uh, we'll talk about cruciferous vegetables in just a moment, but in respects to the plastic water bottles, you can buy glass containers or um, there's, a, there's a very good company actually that has been making the rounds with a lot of podcaster influencers, Liquid Death, that has canned water. I used to, I, I used to, I should actually get some more Liquid Death because uh, it's, I mean, I mean, people will talk about metal toxicity, but in my personal opinion, that is the lesser of the two evils in that regard. And if you can't find, if you don't do the metal because you're worried about that, again, go, go glass or buy a filter. Plastic utensils, if you're cooking with plastic spatulas, plastic crockery, you know, in general, it's just a medium for the body, the, the plastics to get into the body. The, the number one way BPA gets into the body is through food. It's one of the number one ways. So be careful of how you're ingesting. It's not supposed to be polystyrene. It's supposed to be polyester, polyester, which is a nod to some of the textiles that we are using, such as our clothing, such as our bed sheets. Another way for the plastic to get into the body. I mean, if you spend how many hours sleeping every single day and you're lying on plastic, which can absorb through the skin, issue, issue. Cotton and uh, wool, just go natural. You'll, you'll find the continuity with most of these things is just going back to basics, just going back to a very kind of ans ancestral, basic kind of, uh, kind of life. And the last little nod I did want to give to cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, like uh, cauliflower as well, is there's evidence of when you're ingesting these things that the folate breaks down the plastics in the blood. So this could be a very, very potent um, thing that you could leverage if you're worried about uh, a plastic that unfortunately you've already ingested over your time. So gentlemen, these definitely are not theories today. These are cold, hard facts. This is blocking your ability to express yourself in a more masculine demeanor and could be the consequence of the, I know is a consequence of the feminization of, um, of men these days. And uh, it's something that we need to safeguard against. And I would implore you to share any other ways of mitigating the presence of BPA in your environment for our other brothers here. And this will all be included in my new book, which I am still currently cooking up in the lag lab. I'm about 10,000 words in, and uh, it's gonna be my best piece of work yet. So I'll, I'll be dropping that, uh, I'll be dropping that soon. I'll be dropping that when it's ready and, and uh, and I'm, I'm pleased with the quality of it because you guys deserve the best. Anyway, these aren't theories, they're facts. Speak soon.